Hello everybody and welcome back to a new video in the KU Leuven study abroad video series. My name is Laura and if you want to study abroad in Belgium or you want to study at the Catholic University of Leuven then this is the video for you. Today I will be answering some frequently asked questions um, about studying abroad in Belgium as an international student or um, about studying at KU Leuven, the Catholic University of Leuven. I will be talking about the admissions procedure, I will be talking about part-time job as an international student in Belgium, I will be talking about like what to write in a um, motivation letter, I will also be talking about scholarships, also be talking about uh, whether you can use a GED to be admitted to KU Leuven and about my own major all these kinds of questions that I got a lot um, uh, that I often get on my other KU Leuven um, videos so if you're interested in watching one of those you can click up here I'll also add them later on in the video so you can definitely check them out okay let's start. okay first and foremost I got a question what part-time jobs are available for international students uh, now, you can really easily find a part-time job if you study at KU Leuven or you study in Leuven as an international student. All you need to do is you go to Google, you type in international student KU Leuven part-time jobs and it will bring you usually to KU Leuven's job shop shop. It's like very funny, it's like a student job job shop <laughs> and um, I can't personally log in there because I'm not a student at the moment um, at KU Leuven so uh, I can't show you what kind of jobs are inside but you just log in there with your KU Leuven credentials and you'll get a list of all kinds of jobs uh, English jobs Dutch jobs French jobs whatever you want usually what you can expect to be doing as an international student is um, working in some restaurant for example or doing some kind of marketing job being either like a teaching assistant or um, working for KU Leuven it's, uh, itself so there are actually a lot of jobs available and for a fact my Japanese boyfriend who studied abroad in at KU Leuven uh, he worked at a restaurant called Shiki Noya in um, in the center of Leuven so if you want to work there then definitely try because they accept um, English speaking people without a problem uh, one thing to note here though is that you can only work up to 20 hours during um, school weeks and um, you can't work during class hours so um, if you have a class at the specific time say from 2 to 3 you can't work there because um, Okay, you know, for things that your work, your school should come first, you know? So if you don't have classes in the afternoon, you can definitely work. But if you have classes, normally you can't work then. Um, this rule does not apply to uh, school holidays. So winter vacation, summer vacation, um, all these kinds of vacations, you can work more. So that's fine. Okay, second question. Uh, another question I got actually quite a few times is, do they accept a GED? Uh, to be admi for admission so if you have that kind of diploma do they do you have a chance to be admitted at K Leuven the answer is yes now what is a GED a GED is a general educational development test uh, that you have to um, pass and it equals it will it is seen as uh, equivalent to a high school diploma now since a GED diploma will grant you access to higher education I believe in Canada and in um, the United States the KU Leuven will um, also check your GED diploma and in most cases, pretty much all cases, they will give you um, admission to KU Leuven as well because um, if your home country's high school diploma grants you access to higher education then that will be seen as also um, that will be seen as equal to a Belgian high school diploma and grant you access to KU Leuven as well. So for all those who have a high school diploma that gives you access to higher education in your home country, do not worry, your high school diploma will be accepted in Belgium. Now I often get questions about uh, scholarships in particular and I completely understand um, financials are very important when you want to study abroad because it's absolutely not cheap. Now. Um, can you get a scholarship if you want to study at KU Leuven or study at uh, a study in Leuven or in Belgium or somewhere else as an international student? The answer is yes, but you'll have to search well. Um, actually, so again, let's go to Google. Uh, if you type in like international student scholarships, there are lots and lots and lots of pages. Now there are scholarships that are 
available from the Belgian government for studying in Belgium, specifically for international students. And uh, there's one thing I have to note here though, is that there's not a lot of um, scholarships from the Belgian government available on bachelor level. So um, in, if you are looking to study um, at KU Leuven and you want to start at a bachelor level, then it will be hard for you to find a, um, a scholarship from the Belgian government, I believe. Um, however, there are lots of scholarships available from the uh, master levels onwards, so master or uh, manama, that's a master after master or like a PhD postgraduate. Um, so yeah, there's many, many options. You can just go through the list. There's so many, they have all different, um, um, how do you say it, all different requirements. So I can't go through each of them specifically uh, one by one. Also because I'm not familiar with those um, scholarships myself. Now, if you um, can't find a scholarship that suits you or the study you want to do at KU Leuven or in Belgium, then I highly, highly recommend you to um, either like contact the Ministry of Education in your home country or Google in your uh, native language um, about scholarships specifically available uh, from your country for students who want to go abroad. So say, for example, you're from Let's take a, a country out of outside of Europe. You're from South Korea. I'm just saying something, right? And you want to study in Belgium, but there's not really a, a, a scholarship available for you uh, from the Belgian government. Then try Googling in Korean uh, if there are any scholarships available for Korean students wanting to go abroad. In that way, you often can find a uh, another like a scholarship. So I highly recommend you to try that out. Okay, so another question I got very, very often is what's my major? Now, I studied at two Belgian universities. I studied at the Free University of um, Brussels, so the VUB, as well as the Catholic University of Leuven. In Brussels, I studied um, physiotherapy and rehabilitation sciences. And in, um, at Leuven, I studied something completely different. I studied uh, language and regional studies, Japanology. So, um, yeah very two different fields but both are very interesting okay so uh, next up is a question uh, what's the most important thing to apply and this is very hard to say um, mostly because the application or the admission procedures in Belgium are so different especially if you com uh, compare it to uh, like the United States or somewhere else the admission process um, is not so hard it is a bit different than for Belgian students so you will need like a motivation letter and you'll need uh, transcripts and stuff and you'll need your um, high school diploma from your home country now I would say definitely pay some attention to that motivation letter so for example if you have not the great is great in high school or something but you have a great motivation letter that can really sway um, the admission uh, bureau in your favor and uh, give you they will give you admission anyways because they believe like everybody should have a chance at least to try out a higher education now uh, so what I believe is the most important part of your admission uh, mission is like your motivational letter so I'm often asked as well what to write or if I have any tips for writing that motivational letter now yes I do I have some tips for you so uh, please take a little note with you okay so First and foremost, uh, it's very important for KU Leuven to um, write in your motivational letter why they would want you to study at their university. How can you be an asset to them? What can you give them? Yeah, can you give them back? Because they are giving you a great education, but how can you be... Um, how can you have a positive influence on uh, KU Leuven, the university, your surroundings? That's what they want to know. So um, yeah, what you can write there is, you can write about your own personal experiences in life, how they have shaped you and um, why they let you on the path to wanting to study in Belgium. Now also because of your experience throughout life, what will that those experiences you've had before like the way the person you are at that moment how can that person have a good influence on KU Leuven now say for example um, 
you uh, are very very social because of your background and you know a lot of languages then one positive influence you could have on your surroundings in Keilöve is that you can help lots of people with their languages you can spread culture um, from your home country like stuff like that that's something that Keilöve really wants to hear you know also definitely don't forget to write what you think you can get out of the experience uh, from studying at Keilöve or studying in Belgium so writing um, which course you would like to take very much and what you want to take back from it or what you want to do with it in the future so for example if you're very interested in in uh, veterinarian studies for example and in your home country there's not a lot of veterinarians or there's still a lot of um, abuse of animals for example and after your studies at KU Leuven or somewhere else, you want to take that knowledge that you got from KU Leuven back to your home country and um, like improve the situation there for animals or help out lots of animals. So it's important to also um, give them a little glimpse of what you want to do in the future. Even if you don't know it for sure, you can uh, still talk about what you, um, why you want to study at KU Leuven, what you can do with it now, like why you will benefit from it. That's very important. So. Um, you don't have to write the greatest essay in the world for that motivational letter just one a4 or a one a4 back and uh, back side and front side will definitely suffice but just show yourself show your personality show who you are that's um, that's important I think Okay, and last but not least, I'm going to answer a question um, in regards to the exams. Now, probably not everybody's favorite topic. <laughs> so I often get asked, how do you take exams um, at K Leuven or take exams in Belgium? Now, it depends. It depends on the professor and on your uh, major, mostly. So the main types of uh, exams that are usually taken are either written exams, so you just go to the aula or to the auditorium you sit down you get a paper with lots of questions you fill it up so that's one and you can have either then open questions or uh, multiple choice questions or stuff like that with either um, guessing correction or not then second option is you have an oral exam so that means um, you get like your exam questions and you get like 15 or 30 minutes of preparation time and then you go inside to the professor and you have a one-on-one -on -one usually um, exam so he asks or she asks you the questions and um, you will like give like a mini presentation about your knowledge kind of like that kind of feeling and they might ask side, some side questions or really test like how deep your knowledge goes so that's the second type of exams you have then third type of exams is um, open book exams so for example in law uh, law faculty you will often see this I think um, where you will get like for example cases like, um, cases uh, law cases and you have to solve them right but you can't do that without the law book or something like that next to you so you can use the law book to um, consult with the laws and then check and like, do your exam so that's the third type of no, third, third type of exam and then the fourth type of exam is um, a practical exam so either like on a computer that you have to do some Excel exercises or um, I don't know do coding or if you work in the lab then um, make some kind of chemistry stuff I don't know how to explain that I'm not like um, very knowledgeable about that part but yeah it's a practical exam so those are the four main types of exams and now depending depending on your needs so if you can't see very well or can't hear very well or um, have some other problems like dyslexia then um, in um, communication with your professor or their assistant you can um, still adjust the uh, exam or the type of exam to uh, your specific needs so please don't worry about that okay last question for today um third exam period question mark question mark question mark okay i get this a lot actually so in belgium we usually have three exam periods meaning you have a first exam period after the uh, winter semester fall winter semester in january then you have a little bit of a free period free time vacation time and then starts the spring summer semester and it ends uh, in june when you have exams again so two exam periods now if you fail a class or a course in either the first or the second exam period 
period that doesn't mean you um, have failed the class completely for that year you will have uh, the opportunity to take the exam once more during the third exam period in August so during summer vacation it's really something that many people want to um, want to avoid but uh, for some students it's uh, it's actually a blessing in disguise um, because it makes them uh, able to pass the class anyway so third exam period takes place in august all you have to do for it is uh, register after you found out that you failed a class during your first or second exam period uh, so yeah you can do that through the online platform of KU Leuven you just register for that um, exam uh, in August then or sometimes September even and uh, you take it again hopefully you pass that time you don't need to pay extra for that it's already included in your tuition fees and everything so yeah it's a really great system if you ask me now luckily um, there are many many students who pass their um, classes in the first and second exam period so they have like a long three month break so I hope you guys will be able to enjoy that too okay so that were like all of the frequently asked questions that uh, I get a lot on my um, can you love a video series uh, now if you have any more questions then please leave them down below I'm happy to help you out happy to respond to you uh, so yeah I hope you enjoyed this video I hope it was helpful to you if you want to know more about studying at KU Leuven or studying in Belgium then definitely click up here or up here there are a lot more videos in this series that can help you out with specific problems such as tuition or um, what the day looks like when you are actually studying there so definitely check those out also kindly consider subscribing down below for more because I upload new videos uh, twice a week okay so thank you so much for uh, watching and I'll see you in my next video bye